Hey, it's Sufero Geek Toolkit, and today I'm going to talk about Wiz bulbs, and I'll talk about why I'm so excited about these bulbs, because they were kind of like buried treasure, I felt like I discovered. You ever have that thing where like you buy something, and you expect it to be really terrible, and you take it home, and it's like the best thing ever, and you're like, how come I didn't know about these before? How come everybody doesn't know about these? And that's what these bulbs were. And then you do research on them, and you find out they weren't what you thought they were at all. So we're going to talk about these bulbs. We'll do a quick mini review. This isn't sponsored or anything. This is another. I bought these and these were cool. And you should know about them if you're in home automation or if you just want smart bulbs. And then we're going to talk about uh, how to get them in a home assistant. We'll talk about what features there are. One of the things I never liked is sometimes I look up an integration for home assistant and it's like, yeah, this works. And it's like, okay, but what can I do with it? So we're going to show you exactly what you can do with it. We're going to talk about scenes, which are incredibly important. Some of the challenges that happen when you have a smart bulb and a dumb switch or a smart bulb and a smart switch because they, they fight. So we'll talk about that as well and some solutions. And then we'll do a final wrap up and conclusion. So that's what we're going to do in this episode of Geek Toolkit. All right, welcome back. So let's talk about real quick the story of me getting these bulbs and why they're so awesome. I went to Costco, I saw smart bulbs on the shelf and the thing about Costco is it's a big box store in the US. They have an amazing return policy. Basically, if something doesn't work or it's not to your expectations, they just take it back. So I took the gamble on it, but I didn't expect much because they were really inexpensive. It was four bulbs for $50 US, which is the price of one Philips Hue bulb. I brought that home opened it up, plugged them in, and when the light came out, I immediately knew that this was something different. Two reasons. The whites on this bulb were amazing. It can typically, if you have a light bulb that can be uh, have a tunable white, it can be like a yellowish, which is more like an incandescent, or it can be like a bluish, which is what you call your daylight bulbs, and basically it's measured in Kelvin. On this app, you could actually tune and say, I want like a 5200 Kelvin light, and the lights were there and matched and looked good and it was very easy to change those levels. This is in huge contrast with a lot of the cheap Chinese bulbs I'd used from companies like Aeser, where I'd plug them in and I'd say, okay, I want you to change your color temperature, and it really gave me three colors. It was either awkward yellow, awkward blue, or like a white. I mean, that was the three things. So this bulb, the Wiz bulbs were amazing in that regard. They were super tunable and super accurate and that, that immediately kind of lit me up of going well, where why haven't i heard of these these are great for just you know white tuning bulbs what about the colors well the colors all looked great now i've had a philips hue gen 1 which has awful greens this thing was nothing like that every color looked really solid and vivid and it switched really cleanly and i really was asking myself at this point how many more of these am i gonna have to buy because these are amazing then I did some research on the brand, and the brand came out of France and Hong Kong. It's actually different. It wasn't a um, bottom barrel, like, how do we get a cheap RGB bulb out and mass produce it? It was a company that focused on that white level tuning, and man, it was good. Uh, they claim to have like 64,000 levels. I didn't test them all, but it looks good. But the other thing is, it kind of made me curious. Like, there's another company came in with a bulb that is compet would be competitive with a Philips Hue, and for a fourth of the price, these guys are, would blow up. But that's not what happened. Signify, who's behind Philips U, bought the company. <laughs> put Philips on the brand and put them on the store shelf right next to them. So if you go to buy these today, you're not going to find necessarily Wiz. I mean, you can search for Wiz and they'll show up. But they're Philips Wiz, which is a bit confusing. They'll sell them right next to Hue. They don't work with Hue. They don't use the same app as Hue. They're actually a different technology. They're Wi-Fi bulbs. You don't need. You can't use them with a Hue Bridge or anything, which is more of a Zigbee and a different technology altogether, or even Bluetooth. It doesn't use any of the same technology. It just has the name Philips on it. Okay, so back second day. By the way, if you're recording a video, make sure your battery's going. Otherwise, you'll talk to your camera all night long, and when you go to edit, you'll find out you're alone the whole time. Second thing I want to talk about that I really love about these lights is. The question that we're asking is, do they work with Home Assistant? And thanks to Steven Traub and his integration that he's been working on, they do. Now, as the time of filming this, this is not an official integration, but I have a feeling that it will be before long. He's been doing a lot of work on it, along with a bit of the community. The other nice thing about this is it's available now because it's in GitHub and we can use it. And if you watch my episode five, 
where I did my Home Assistant tutorial about hacks and the Home Assistant Community Store, we can combine those to pull in this off of GitHub now and use it before it becomes an official integration. And understanding how to do that, even if you're not interested in WizLights, is a key thing to being able to use Home Assistant to be able to do things before they're officially ready. We're gonna go over that now, and we're gonna go into the integration, how it works, and then I'll come back to talk to you about smart lights and dumb switches, or smart lights and smart switches, which uh, can end up in some situations that don't feel smart at all. I'll talk to you in a sec. All right, let's take a look at basically this integration and what it looks like. The first page we're gonna to go to is the GitHub page. The GitHub page here is super useful because this has all of the tutorials and documentation of how to get things set up. This is where we're gonna get our configuration until it becomes an official add-on. Now, I'll put this in the description here, but the useful things here is to look at the version and change log to see how things are going. This is under development still. The other thing here is the feature set that's available and what light bulbs it can talk to. And then we're gonna to go to the very bottom and this part here is gonna be really important. This is how you actually configure it in Home Assistant once you get the integration installed. I'm not meaning this to be a tutorial on how to install integrations since I feel like I've covered that in other videos, but I will try to go slow enough that if this is one of your first integrations, you can figure it out. What we're gonna do is go over to Hacks and if you looked at episode five, you know how to get this installed. Click on integrations here and you can click explore and search for WizBulb. If you do not see it there, then what you're gonna to wanna to do is click on the triple dot and go to custom repositories and add it in. That means it's not added into Hacks yet. And then when you click add, you'll see it pop up here in the WizBulb integration. That's how you get it here and you can actually explore it. Explore here, click Wiz, it will show up and then you can install it to get it to here. Once you have the integration installed, you have one other thing to do, and that is edit your file for your YAML. We're gonna use the file editor, and basically this is from that GitHub page I talked about. Now these IP addresses, I used advanced IP scanner. You can use whatever IP scanner you want. Basically, you're gonna look for your light bulbs and get them added in. I have four light bulbs. I called them Makerspace one through four because they're in my Makerspace. Very simple lighting. Now I do have a Makerspace switch also that is a Z-Wave switch. That'll become important later. I'll talk about why that can conflict and how these things work together. Okay, once you have those, you can check to see if they're around. You can go to configuration entered entities and then search for whatever you call them. I called mine Makerspace, so I'll search for that. And here you see I've got uh, Makerspace one, two, three, and four, and they showed up as lights. I can actually click on this and get a preview of how it's going. And then I can click here and actually see the lighting control. Okay, what I've done now is I've opened up this area on the right here and basically brought up my video. And the reason I did that is so you can see this light here. We're gonna add this to the UI now. So we'll go to Makerspace, I just created a tab. And to do this here, we're gonna go into the edit dashboard mode, add a card and add a light bulb card. Now I pointed it to my fourth light because that's the one that's behind me. And you can see it's a little bit green right now. This may not look like that on the camera, but here we'll dim it and show you. There we go, we can dim it down a bit. Now if I click on this, it turns the light off. And click again, it'll turn it on and back to where it was before it turned off. And if I click the triple dots, I can actually change it to any color I want. So we'll go for a pinkish and a red and so on. There's a green. And the other thing we can do is we can list the effects here. So like TV time is a dim blue and you can see it changed again. So we've got full control of the light bulb, but the thing is you can see the other light that's in the background there, the one over my right shoulder, that one's not changing at all. And the reason being is they're individually controlled. You can only control one light bulb at a time through this method. That's not super useful. What we really wanna do is control all four of them doesn't mean we want all four to be the same. As a matter of fact, one of the powers of having a smart bulb is you can do scenarios where you can have one bulb over, let's say, a couch on, so that if you're doing, like, say, watching a movie and you wanna be able to eat snacks, you can do that while being able to control that light and have all the other ones off. As a matter of fact, my movie mode is exactly that. We'll see if this shows up. So, yeah, so I have a blue bulb off to my left that's on. You see that's what the light is that is coming over my shoulder and everything else in my room except for my studio light is off right now. When I go to Makerspace On, that's what a scene looks like where everything turned on in sync. 
and again there's the movie mode so we can control all the lights with scenes let's look at how to do that real quick we're going to go to configuration here and we'll go to scenes and here's our different scenes this relaxing one will give you a good idea of how to create one you give it a name and then you can give it an icon now i did this mdi beach if you search for material design icons you can actually search for anything you want here and look for the icon if you find it you can do mdi colon you can search for mdi colon and you can find that icon so let's see if i want to do an icon of i don't know a floppy drive and you just search for floppy and here's all these different ones here and if i mouse over it says content dash save so if i do mdi content dash save i get that icon that's how that works i search for relaxing found a beach one and it gives me this icon now this is really important because this will carry on through the rest of the user interface and that's how you make things look a little bit nicer these were entities not devices so when i added them i added them down here and just to save time in the video i don't want to go through this part here but just to show you just type what you're looking for and click on it and it will add it in now keep in mind a scene doesn't have to be just lights i have a wled led i could actually do other things like outlets and switches i've decided i made the light over my right shoulder a little bit red and the other one green just so it was a very different look so i can show you what this looks like once you have this scene you can save it in the lower right hand corner and then from the scenes ui you can actually activate these so i can go on and then go back to relaxing and once i know that that's tested and working i can go back up here to overview makerspace and we want to add it now there's two ways to do this um let's see here we're gonna we'll just start over so you can see what this looks like add card and then do it by entity and it just works really really slick watch this i'm going to type scene there's my little icon called relaxing i'm going to select that hit continue it shows me a preview here I'm like yeah that looks cool and this is how i built this card here actually there it is for relaxing um I can actually click activate and we're on that scene if i click on off we're on that scene what's cool about this is i'm starting to build up a very simple but powerful ui and add it over here so i can control this entire room i can control all four lights or actually more than four lights and treat my room as a environment that i want to control in a certain way if i'm watching movies and that's my activity then that's the scene I want and I can set up okay I want my lights here I want my TV on I want this off maybe I want to like power down my monitor stuff like that get all of that working and then when I activate that scene all of it happens if you're using Nabucasa or anything that relays this up to your Amazon or Google device then you can also use voice control to set those scenes and that allows you to control the lights also now Nabucasa I'll talk about in a different video it is a five dollar a month service but for what it does I gladly pay the money at $60 a year and it allows making this stuff connect to an Amazon device or a Google device incredibly easy. As a matter of fact, right when I create these scenes, I'm getting notifications on my phone that these are getting created on there as well. Now, I also mentioned I have a Z-Wave switch. Let's talk about that for a second. Here's my Z-Wave switch. Now, if I turn this off, the lights will turn off but what happened now is I just killed all of my bulbs. So let's break out to the other video clip where I'll explain why this happens. And we'll talk a little bit about ways to fix it before we wrap up today. Okay, I wanna take a quick segue and talk about what happens when you have smart bulbs in a home automation system and you have a dumb switch. Now the bulbs have a basically a chip in them that is powered when the lights are on. When your light switch is flipped on, they're getting electricity and they're able to listen for commands. Now here's the thing, if somebody walks over and hits the light switch, it kills power to those bulbs. That means that they don't listen to commands, that means that they're no longer smart bulbs, they're just dead. And so you should be aware of that because it was something that I hadn't really thought through when I would first gotten my first set of smart bulbs. The thing is like home assistant will just report them as dead because they, as far as it's concerned, it can't ping the IP addresses. They're gone off the grid. Now, if you have a smart switch, you end up in an even weirder situation. You can have a smart switch and have a home automation thing turn the switch off, which will again, kill power to the bulbs. Then you can no longer talk to them. So what you wanna do in your automations where you have a smart switch is turn the switch on, give it a short delay, and then try to talk to the bulbs. And hopefully they've come up and they're on the network fast enough that you can communicate with them. And just be aware this whole situation exists. 
Also be aware with a lot of smart switches, if somebody hits that smart switch off manually, again, it's gonna kill power to the bulbs and your automations will no longer work unless you're basically syncing that state in Home Assistant. So just be aware of that whole scenario when you're designing your home automation setup. There is one other scenario I wanna talk about and that is what's called a no relay switch or a switch that can turn off the relay. And I wanna explain what that is and why it's important. There's two switches I'm aware of today that know how to do this. One is the Innovelli, which I'm gonna do a video on shortly. The other one is the Shelly devices can also do this. The reason this is important is what they do is they make the switch work as a home automation switch only. That means if somebody hits down on the switch, it doesn't actually cut power to the smart lights, which is exactly what you'd want if you have smart bulbs. Now I've seen people do everything from 3D print blocks to go over the switch to prevent people from touching them. I've seen tape over the switch to prevent it from going off. Whatever your solution is, you just should be aware of this before you go out and buy smart bulbs because it's a really bad situation to get into if you have other people in your household that are using your lights or if you're like me and you're clumsy and every now and then you forget and hit the light switch off and then wonder why nothing's working the next day. Uh, remember, if you like videos like this, I do a lot of stuff on geeky gadgets. I do a little bit of reviews nowadays. I do a lot of home automation stuff I've been doing. I want to end by saying thank you so much for watching this video and supporting me content. If you like this video, please give it a like. That really matters to me. I do look at how many likes my videos get to kind of determine what I should follow up on and if people liked it. I'm Joe Farrell with Geek Toolkit. Thank you for watching and until next time.